a man's life at sea. What does that really look like for me? Well, y'all hear the thoughts and reflections of a man living aboard a 44-foot sailboat with his wife, circumnavigating the world one wave at a time. Working like a dog, getting paid like a puppy. We got some work to do. We got to get this dinghy back up on these davits and secured to go out to sea. All right, we're making water, y'all. It's five o'clock and it's Tellaru cocktail hour. So cheers, babe, to sailing on Tellaru. Cheers, baby. Self-made, self-taught, through and through. And y'all, as famous boxer Mike Tyson once said, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Now it's about cocktail 30 aboard Tellaru. And sailing Tellaru in the Bahamas, babe. Cheers. cheers. Just hanging out, getting a little work done. Bright sunny day at the top of the mast on Tellaru. Got our outbound clearance and we are the fifth vessel departing Bermuda today. Had to do lots of tacking, had lots of variable winds yesterday evening. We are off the coast of stunning Sao Miguel Island. We got punched in the mouth by the good old Gulf Stream and Mother Nature. The good old dinghy was flat. Not exactly the news that we wanted to get after being out at sea for our 19th full day. Essence of Muscatel mm, is much better than Essence of Moose Tail. I can tell you all that. No, no, no. So first of all, for me, I grew up in a small country town of 3,500 people. My first job in high school was driving a tractor on the farm. I had a 1984 Jeep CJ7. I fished, deer hunted, duck hunted, and grew up as country as could be, y'all. And never could I have possibly imagined a life on the water at sea. Little did I know way back then that after a successful career in the courtroom as a trial lawyer, adventure and the siren song of the sea would capture me. My gorgeous wife Amber and I would buy a sailboat and away we would go. If only then I could know what all we truly didn't know. Vincent Van Gogh once said, the heart of a man is very much like the sea. It has its storms, it has its tides, and in its depths, it has its pearls too. Y'all, a man's life at sea is a lot like the tidal flow. The highs are never so high, and the lows are never so low. The highs for me are things like living a life of travel, adventure, and freedom aboard our own tiny floating home, getting away from the everyday rat race on land, freedom from a set schedule, truly living life by a compass and not a clock. There is also a real sense of accomplishment in setting off on a long passage, or even crossing an ocean, navigating your way, managing your boat, the sails and systems, dealing with mother nature and all the things that come your way. Then, finally seeing land on the horizon and sailing into a harbor or bay, knowing you made your way, you did it. You got your boat and your crew safely across. There is truly a sense of pride and accomplishment and a real feeling of you did it. You did the thing. For me, the highs are also all the amazing moments and experiences with the love of my life, my gorgeous wife, exploring far away places, taking in the food,
the culture, the sights, the sounds and scenery, or just sitting on the deck together, getting lost in the stunning sunrises and mesmerizing sunsets, these are the true highs. All the memories made, for you see, the goal of a life well lived is to die with memories and not dreams. And that's the essence of a man's life at sea. By now, y'all may be wondering just what is a typical day at sea? Well, I gotta be honest with you. There really is no such thing. The reality is every day at sea is different. On top of managing the boat, the sails and systems, some days at sea are spent fixing and repairing things that break. Yep, y'all things on a boat will break. Stuff breaking and having to make repairs at sea in the middle of the night with only a flashlight or in extreme heat, squeezed upside down in small, tight spaces and places has brought a grimace to many men's faces, I guarantee you. Since we left Coconut Grove, Florida not quite a year ago, here's a list of some of the things that have broken and required repair or replacement on good old Tellaru. Now y'all, the galley and the shower fresh water pump had to be replaced. The anchor locker salt water wash down pump had to be replaced. I even had to fix the toilet discharge hose from the toilet all the way out through the through hall. I also had to deal with the replacement of the leak in our fresh water system. There was a T-junction at the fitting that feeds into the hot water heater. Had to tear that out and replace it. Also had to replace the fresh water line, and I'm not kidding y'all, from the fresh water pump in the engine room all the way out to the water tank. I also had to tear down and service one of our seized secondary winches also had to replace the high pressure filtration membranes in our rain man water maker system i then had to replace our shower head and water line in our shower i had to tear down and clean the carburetor on a trusty old yamaha outboard engine i even had to replace the genoa lead roller block in the middle of the night in the middle of the atlantic ocean y'all I had to replace the staysail sheet clutch. I also had to replace all of our anchor chain after we lost our anchor in the storm. And y'all, that's just the list of stuff that actually broke. It doesn't include all the regular chores like fresh water system filter changes, engine fuel filters, oil filters, oil changes, as well as routine mast and rigging inspections, and all the other things you have to do to keep up with a boat. For a man living at sea, you have to be resilient. You have to be self-reliant. You have to be able to adapt and overcome. To put it simply, as my grandma used to say, you have to at times be a jack of all trades and a master of none just to get the job done. Sometimes there is no easy day. Just a seeming feeling of the only easy day was yesterday. Other lows come from dealing with mother nature, the weather, storms, rain, and wind for hours on end. It can take a toll on a man's soul, y'all. Long passages, days on end at sea, just a couple. Sailing as a crew of two can also have an effect on you. At sea, there is sometimes a sense of separation or distance. I know it sounds crazy, but even though you are right there aboard together, each one has their job or task. From navigating and fixing, to cooking and cleaning, to watches. One is often up while the other one is down sleeping. Good morning, baby doll. Shift change. Shift change. And I'll take over from here. So you are relieved and you can go get some much needed and deserved rest and sleep. Once in a harbor or bay, the day can involve other boat projects, like fixing or repairing stuff that simply couldn't be done underway at sea. Other tasks, like refueling, oil changes, reprovisioning, laundry, they all have to be done. 
The realities of sailing around the world also include learning to live with no car, only a dinghy, and your two feet. Now y'all, nobody told me that you would have to sometimes walk three miles one way just to get groceries. Or walk a mile with a laundry bag on your back just to do your laundry. And then there are all the language barriers, street signs, food labels, restaurant menus that are not in English. So sometimes, simply finding your way getting groceries, or simply ordering food at a restaurant or cafe sometimes becomes a guessing game filled with trial and error. And speaking of restaurants and cafes, now y'all, one of the things I miss most about the good old American way <laughs> is breakfast. Now it's not just any breakfast, because you see in some places, breakfast is a teensy tiny little espresso shot and a croissant. Now I'm talking about a real old-fashioned country boy breakfast. I'm talking about fried eggs over easy, country sausage, country ham, homemade biscuits and creamy country gravy with a side of that good old fried hash browns. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Now y'all, the funny thing is, now you can find a McDonald's or a Burger King or a KFC in just about any country. But y'all, we've only been gone just shy of a year. And about now, this old country boy would almost risk lie, limb, or peril. Peril? I'd run through a forest fire and a pair of gasoline soaked drawers to get to breakfast at Cracker Barrel about now. Now y'all, all jokes aside, there simply is no other place I'd rather be than at sea with my gorgeous bride by my side. Y'all, it's sure not easy. But if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. The highs are never so high and the lows are never so low. But the highs sure are worth it to me. Y'all, it's one hell of an adventure and one hell of a ride. And for me, this is a man's life at sea. A hell of a time. A hell of I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank. It ain't that long till I'm back at the farm.
Thank you.